Hello, wonderful peoples. Welcome back to Theo is back. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for joining me for yet another video. In this video, guys, I'm going to share with you the 14 things I wish I knew before moving to Rwanda. Stay tuned. March is rather special to me. Four years ago, in March 2017, I was in Rwanda burying my last and only grandparent that I ever knew. It was a lovely ceremony. I was glad I was able to pay my last respects to him. On my way back to Europe, I met a Rwandan girl at the train station in Brussels. I invited her to my Amsterdam apartment, you know, just for fun. She has been my girlfriend ever since. Three years ago, in March 2018, I went vegan, plant-based. I stopped eating animals or any products with animal products in them in my diet and I've never looked back ever since. Two years ago, in March 2019, I received the shipment with the gym equipment that I had ordered and I was able to finally fulfill my lifelong dream of starting my own gym. Hello wonderful people. So I just got an interesting phone call. My gym equipment has just arrived. So I'm on my way there to go check it out after waiting for so freaking long on it. All right, let's go. One year ago, that gym got closed due to the pandemic and it has been closed ever since. This past year has been truly tough, but I am grateful I'm still here, still alive and still healthy. Today, March 2021, feels like another milestone where I'm doing something significant with my life. I started a side hustle of selling gym equipment here in Kigali, which I wish one day would become a main hustle. I decided to double down on personal training here in Chigali and go fully digital with my regular gym clients. I'm doing so by training everyone for the Chigali International Peace Marathon, which will happen on the 20th of June 2021. I'm having this 10k challenge, which anyone can join all over the world, basically. I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to see everyone running or walking at the Chigali Peace Marathon. If you are interested in this, just send me a personal in, uh, message on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, basically, anyone, anywhere can join in the training. But March 2021 also feels like a good moment to reflect on my life of moving to Rwanda, which I did in two years ago. I can't believe two years have already passed. In this video, I'm sharing with you 14 things I wish I knew before moving to Rwanda. This is just based on my personal opinion and experiences. Did you also move to Rwanda recently? Share your experience in the comment section below. Maybe we can all learn from your experiences as well. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell as well. Can we get this video to 500 likes? You can also support my YouTube channel through Patreon and get some perks. It's all linked below this video. All right, let's get to item number one, which I wish I knew before moving to Rwanda. Number one the weather the rain season is real when it rains it pours rain is something terrific here in rwanda in a bad way i would say rain destroys houses it destroys roads and other infrastructure it even kills people it is something to be truly afraid of especially if you're living in more rural part of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. If you ever get stuck there during a heavy rain, just pull yourself to safety. <sighs> Number two, extreme poverty is real, especially when it comes to my own family members, I feel it extra hard. I sometimes get this kind of survival guilt where I ask myself, why was I able to live in Europe and my other families not or how am I able to even spend money in one day that some of my own family members cannot even uh, make in a year. Number three, the government of Rwanda sees sports activities as non-essential. Of course I needed the pandemic to find this out but as a health expert of course I don't agree. 
But hey, what can you do about it, eh? Number four, the staring in the streets, it never stops. Just get used to ignoring it. There's no other remedy. Number five, Chigali can be kind of lonely. This was also the case before Corona hit. You see, Chigali is kind of, is kind of like a small village. Everyone is interconnected and to each other and we all kind of like know each other. And there are not so many social activities to be done out there. So be prepared. It, it hit me and it took me a while to, to digest it, but it is really the case. Number six, I found out that Rwanda is rather popular on the internet. Definitely in the top 10 most popular countries in Africa. In my interview with Wodemaya, who is becoming uh, the most subscribed to YouTube YouTuber of Africa, he also mentioned this, that once he stepped foot in Rwanda and started recording footage from Rwanda, he saw a totally different kind of like engagement with his content. Even that guy from uh, Humans of New York, when he was writing stories about Rwanda, he also mentioned that these stories were quite unique and he got also a different kind of audience that he did not get before. If I had known this, I would have probably had doubled down on my content of Rwanda from the get-go. Number seven. I wish I knew the impact the Rwandan genocide had had on the Rwandan youth that grew up in Rwanda. In my interview with Ivan, whom I consider a typical Rwandan person who grew post-genocide in Rwanda, I got some new insights about life in Rwanda post-genocide. Especially with a guy like Ivan, someone my age, it really hits home because I, when I look at him, I think that could have been my life. So I wish I had knew more about it before coming to Rwanda. Number eight, the news you hear about Rwanda when you're not in Rwanda is not as big of a deal in Rwanda when you are in Rwanda. Does that make sense? For example, there's a high profile court case that's going on right now, but I'm sure many people on the internet know more ins and outs details about that court than the people who are living in Rwanda. I'm definitely one of those people. Life here in Rwanda just goes on. And number nine out of the 14. When people outside of Rwanda criticize the president, the president here gains popularity significantly. It was so funny for me to witness this for the first time, but every time when usually a foreigner criticizes the, the, uh, the Rwandan government or the president uh, directly, the president's popularity in the country rises significantly. And I also realized that many other African brothers and sisters are a big fan of the Rwandan president. Number... 10. Rwandan parents who are living in the diaspora do not know current Rwanda as well as they claim. You see, Rwanda is, has changed and is changing at a super fast pace. The only way to know the current Rwanda right now is to really live current Rwanda. I'll just leave it at that. Number 11. I wish I knew about the downside of being rich in Rwanda. I guess I don't call myself rich. I always say the Rwanda population is poor, but to them, so the majority of Rwandans, I am rich. So this brings a certain downfall that I did not expect. So you see, most people, including some of my own family members, look at you and ask themselves, what can you do for me, instead of wanting to befriend me or to actually get to know me. And to be honest, I understand them because I myself did not grow up rich. So I can imagine when you see someone who can possibly lift you out of your, your, your poverty, you want to cling on and, and get the most out of it. But to me, it, it's kind of, it always feels double. I always kind of have to watch out and, uh, and ask myself, why is this person being like this with me? Is it because they truly want to be, you know, friends with me? Or is it because they want, uh, at the end of the day, ask me something to help with their business or to help with their um, medical bills? But like I said, I understand them. It's just something to get used to. Number 11, Rwanda is cheap. It's extremely cheap. If I knew that Rwanda was this cheap, I would have probably moved here sooner. Like I said in my other video, anyone who's making above $600 a month here is considered rich. And there are some people who are surviving on $2 a day, about $60 a month. However, I cannot live that cheap. That, uh, of course, that has to do with the lifestyle that, I'm, that I used to live and that I'm used to. So therefore, I live the life that is considered rich here. But if I really had to, I can really survive on a lot less. All right, the last two. Number 13, 
the import taxation here in Rwanda is ridiculously high. Therefore, it is very difficult to get things inside of the country. So, of course, the government did this to promote the Made in Rwanda uh, products. However, you know, the quality is really not up to par to the products that you can get from China or, or South Africa or even Europe or America. So right now it's kind of like a togo. We are waiting, we are hoping that the Rwandan's uh, level of production increases so that people really do not want or need to import stuff. But however, like in my business, for example, I needed some high quality gym equipment that cannot be built here in Rwanda. So I had to import them and pay the ridiculous taxes. But hey, I, I wish I knew how bad it was <laughs> before I had moved here. <laughs> not, that it, not that it would have changed anything, to be honest, because, you know, opening a gym was still my lifelong dream. So, but hey, maybe you can do what something with that information. All right, number 14, the last one. Rwanda is not becoming a first world country in any time soon. To be honest, this was my kind of dream or fantasy that I had about Rwanda. I saw Rwanda developing so fast. I was sure that within no time we will be, you know, as rich as one of these like Western countries. But I've realized just like Singapore, there's a long, long way to go. And it will probably take much longer than anyone can anticipate who is alive right now. I hope these lessons will help someone like you out there watching. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like. Hopefully we can hit 500 likes. That would be awesome. Thank you guys. And big thanks to my Patreons who are supporting me and my YouTube channel through these um, difficult times. You can also join my Patreon and get some perks such as consultancy and maybe some other stuff uh, which is all links in the description below. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I would like to see you all in the next video.